Hello and welcome to our very special Mac 2020 tribute show. Coming up is a collage of interviews that we've conducted in the last three weeks following the postponement of Mac 2020. We were all disappointed that the event had to be postponed and thought that this would be a great way of keeping you abreast of what could have been seen at the NEC in April. Now you'll see on the left hand side of your screen an index of topics and a timestamp. So if you have any interest in a specific topic, then you can skip straight to it. But remember, every single video segment you see in this program, the full version is hosted in its entirety on the dedicated platform, mtdcnc.com forward slash Mac. Now what you're about to see is an MTD production supported by the event organizers, the MTA. So we thought a fitting way to start today's program would be to hear from James Selker, the MTA's CEO. James, a huge thank you for joining us on our Mac 2020 tribute show. Uh, engineers have sadly missed some innovations, debuts of machines, for instance, and engineers are quite thirsty at the moment for a lot of information. So one thing MTD CNC wants to say, we are really proud of engineers and the manufacturing sector being involved in the ventilator challenges and supporting the NHS. As CEO of the MTA, would you like to send a message to them as well? Very, very much so. I, I would completely echo your comments, Mark. Uh, we're very, very grateful for a chance to comment and thank you for putting the program together to show some of the amazing innovations that are going to be available. But we're also very proud of the work that we've all been doing in support of the Ventilator Challenge. One little example is, is a managing director of one of our members' customers um, who was setting a machine himself on a Sunday evening. And the beauty of going to our members, who are the technology providers, of course, is that they know where the latest equipment is that's most likely to get the parts right first time and therefore uh, compressing the lead time. And I'd just like to say a huge thank you. It is a shame that the show ha had to be rescheduled. I mean, as you know, our visitor pre-registrations were up 12.5% and we were looking forward to a show that's most successful from 10, 15 years plus. However, we have a higher purpose at the moment and we're so happy to support it. And thank you so much for putting this excellent programme on. Great words there from James. So let's get going. Our first section relates to machine tools. Now, if you'd have been uh, in Hall 6 at Mac 2020, you would have walked past the DTS stand and you would have seen that they took the biggest stand they have ever taken in the company's history. The reason for it is they had this machine, which is a pretty universal machine tool, on show. Now this is the Correa Norma MG35. Now this machine was launched, uh, or we saw it at Emo last year. The flexibility on this machine is pretty unchallenged. I mean, when you look at the combination of the rotary live axis on the table with the UAD head that offers the opportunity to get to millions of positions, it means that you can tackle pretty much any face, any angle, uh, on a component. Now the component size in question, well, this particular table, uh, this is a two meter by 1.6 meter table, uh, can take up to 10 tons. Quickly, what can we expect from LFE? And what's it stand for? Yeah, so LFE is uh, low frequency vibration. It's, uh, it's programmable chip control. And basically what, what that means, uh, it, you know, historically slide end machines have always suffered with, with, with uh, what's called burn nesting where the swarfs, you know, wrapping around the part or wrapping around the tooling, it causes the machine to start, it causes damaged parts. With LFE, it chips the material. It doesn't matter if it's plastics, coppers, aluminiums, stainless steels, right through to exotics. It will chip any material in any feature, even screw cutting as well nowadays. NHX 4000, which is a horizontal machining centre with 21 pallets, very, very compact, very useful to use for high variety and high volume manufacturing um, and it can also be used for low volume manufacturing as well from the point of view of getting the quick setup. 
So there, there are other examples of that. All of this, Mark, is all adequately supported with DMG by Finance. And this is really key to our business at the moment. Customers looking for one-stop manufacturing, um, one-stop one uh, producing of, of, of components means that they can purchase a machine, they can look at the finance, we can supply through our partners on tooling, uh, we can look at software solutions. Um, it's really a big must. But the DMG Mori Finance is really key. You can buy a machine from me today, you pay nothing for six months, no deposits paid, um, and therefore you can start generating cash before you've even started to pay me some money. So we're going to be showcasing the, the V350 generator, which is a, a Bolton application, which we're going to be adding to a, a wire machine, which is the MV1200R, and that's a diamond, diamond wheel dressing application. Um, first one in the UK, so this is actually where we use the EDM process uh, to regrind dressing wheels. It's 390% more effective due to the, the life of the, of the wheel itself. But also it removes 280% more of the bare material, just leaving uh, the pure diamonds there ready to be more effective during application. And I did also ask David whether the introduction of these new machines, considering how successful their machining centre sales have been in recent years, not just here but around the world, I did ask him whether uh, he thought the introduction of this model could in fact double their footprint. Um, yeah, there's certainly, I'd say there's a big demand for the driven tool lathe and there are people um, who've, you know, said, tell me when it's ready, I'll, I'll, I'll order one. Um, it's, yeah, part of the, I know, given the current um, conditions, you, you'd wonder about um, moving into a great big building like we have, but, but the, um, the lathe product was always expected to come and it was always expected to be popular. So there's a lot of um, mechanical design enhancements there as well. Um, smaller footprint, um, more powerful spindle, um, trying to think larger cooling capacity, larger um, bar capacity, um, faster rapids, roller guide weights, things like that. I think initially it'll appeal to Herco users, people who already have a lot of our milling capacity, but gradually we I think we'll attract a lot of new new customers. What where again the, the reason for buying Herco is for one off small volumes, um, you're never sure what the next job will be, um, and it's programming the concept and getting your first off part as quickly and easily as possible. Well the Integrex is our flagship product. Um, the um concept of done in one manufacturing originated with Mazak and Mazak were the first producers of the multitasking machine. What we've done is um, we've enhanced our um, machine by taking on board uh, the requirements of the customer, looking at our research into this product and developing a product that's really key for the way in which manufacturers will wish to go forward. Well, there's a number of aspects that we've taken into consideration for the whole, whole machine design now. Uh, really improved productivity, uh, for today's customers. So the concept of done in one is well understood by our customers and many of our customers are a great success uh, re reducing their manufacturing cost by this. But really now to compete, again, what we need to do is to lower that manufacturing cost. So the lower turret has been designed really to further reduce cycle time and also with the growing demand for more complex work pieces to take on board things like mounting, hydraulic steady rest, tail stock centre, and, and longer tools as well. Now the SX38 machine, this incorporates a turret on this machine. It accommodates the ability to go up to 42 mil bar capacity um, in the non-guide bush mode. But it is a very, very versatile machine. In fact, I caught up with Matt Lee at Emo last year when this machine was uh, first seen, or when I first saw it, and I asked him why they'd introduced it and what was different about this particular model. What was so good about the SX38? Okay, so this is a brand new model for us, so another machine to add to our 38mm range. Turret and platen arrangement on the main spindle. There's a lot more power in this machine than the older machines that we've got in the range. So 11 kilowatts on main and sub spindle, but not only that, you've got a lot of weight. What's it replacing, or is it replacing? What was its predecessor? So its predecessor would be like the SV38R, which we've been making for many years now. It's just an evolution of that. So a lot of things been learned from it. So where to load the machines all from the front now. A lot more power in both spindles as well as on the driven tools. Right. 
and you, th there was two world premieres, the, the, the Akuma LB3000 and also the Moltus with a integral robot. Tell us a little bit more, Ian. Yeah, well, those those robots are the uh, the Armroid Super Fusion robots, which are unique to Akuma at the moment. Um, they're basically designed and built by Akuma. Um, what they allow us to do is uh, basically get what they call a high mix, low volume uh, work. So it, it allows the machine to basically um, during the day the operator can be running the machine on single batch work, very low low batch sort of work. Uh, on an evening, you can pull over the, the stock of, of the machine um, and obviously then run it unmanned during the night or for a period of hours where he may have to go off and use other machines. Um, the robot allows us to, un to load, unload. Um, it allows the machine to turn the part around inside its envelope. Uh, it has got chatter suppression in the way that it picks up. It can pick up a steady on its effector and then obviously um, hold onto the part itself. And what about on the Kitamura front, Eric? I mean, these machines are, uh, again, another addition to your portfolio, and they're always bringing out new technology at Kitamura Machinery. What were you gonna be showing from them? Uh, we were trying to cover the spectrum from the very small capability or capacity machines they had in the mid center, which is a 300 millimeter five axis machine, capable to have uh, up to 12 pallet option uh, 30,000 RPM, ideal for very, very small, precise parts, up to the 500 machine with the BT50 taper that's got a 1,200 Newton meter spindle. I mean, ideal for aerospace and exotic materials, uh, oil and gas, that type of customer. The Swiss Army 7, as you say, we were going to show at MAP 2020. Um, the machine was a development on from our Swiss Nano 4 machine um, and really driven by the marketplace, wanting uh, the same capability as the Nano 4. Um, but with a, a larger bar diameter and uh, larger overall length. I mean, let, when you look at the Swiss Nano machine, it's a very compact machine, very unique in its look. Um, but maybe you could give our viewers, for those that haven't seen the Nano at all, uh, the capabilities of it, you know, the amount of tools in there, uh, what, it, what it's actually made to make. Yeah, I mean, the, the machine is a, is a, a six, has six linear axes, so we have um, X, Y, and Z in the main and X, Y, and Z in the counter. Um, we have a lot of capability with regards to driven tool, more so on the Nano 7 than on the Nano 4. Um, and it's really targeting initially at the micromechanics market, but um, as we saw with the Swiss Nano 4, um, it's automotive, um, electronics, medical, and with the Nano 7, more dental as well. Now, it's interesting you say Boomatech. Uh, it's the only factory that I think uh, uh, I haven't had the fortunate to actually join you to actually visit. But I know, I know that's in the programme maybe for a, a future date. But I, I've seen um, a version of, of the Boomatech machine at the AMRC, if I'm, I'm correct. Um, but it, it, looking at your brief of what you was going to have on the stand, it was the uh, S191 uh, version, which th is that all to do with uh, dental drill terms? For sure. Well, well, firstly, with the factory, that this is our most impressive factory. It's a new factory, a zero carbon footprint factory. So we uh, we certainly must get you out there, Mark. And you're right. The the S191 machine, which is a seven axis turn mill grind machine, would have been producing uh, dental drill turbines on the booth at Mac. Now that's been quite impressive because obviously the Boomer Tech machines is, is, you know, are the machines that probably have your smallest components where, you know, some of your components, you know, go up to, you know, nearly hundreds of metres, don't they? Well, they, they, they do and we have, a, we have a huge range. So Boomer Tech, we can micro machine, Drupal and Rhine and Doris, we can hold 300 tonnes and, 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 and there's, there's, there's many, many different solutions in the middle. But for, for Boomatech in particular, the focus, uh, particularly for the UK market, is on medical components, um, avionics components, micro mechanics, and even watchmaking, which is a big industry for us globally. Now, as you know, Ward High Tech, we're going back to Mac this year for the first time in 10 years, uh, with lots of products in the portfolio, lots of changes in recent years. They do have a lot to talk about. 
One of the things that I was going to bring into this programme which impressed me when I visited Ward High Tech in Sheffield was their Vesta machines and this is one of the, the focuses that they were having at Mac. Now the Vesta range of vertical machining centres is from Huachon. Uh, the particular model that I'm going to mention to you now is the VMC 1000 which you can see here. Now this is a real workhorse of a machine tool, it's a 12,000 RPM machine, uh, it can come with either a Siemens, a Fanuc or a Heidenhain iron ITNC 620 control. It's got um, an oil called 12,000 RPM spindle. Uh, now, but the point I wanted to make about this is a couple of things. The first one is the tool changer. I've never seen this before, but this has a, a, a dual speed tool changer, which means that by using an M code, you can make the tool changer faster or slower. We have there three machines in our stand and one machine at the SolidCam stand, that's our partner. So in our stand, we will have uh, one of the new generation of the vertical machine center, which is the D800. Uh, also, we will have the new generation of turning center, the GL300S. This machine will be equipped with some halter automation and uh, a flatbed CNC lathe, a C510. In, at SolidCam, we will have a five simultaneous axis that is a DCM 625. Now, we all know that XYZ is a household name when it comes to events around the UK. And of course, Mac is no different. Uh, they would have been at Mac 2020 and they would have been exhibiting some of their new products, one of which is the CT52LR. This is the machine we're going to be talking about on this program. Um, I was fortunate enough a couple of months ago to talk to Nigel Atherton uh, before Mac about why he'd introduced this range of machines. Well, we, we've had tremendous success over the last couple of years with the uh, LR range of VMCs and uh, we, we've achieved these sales of over 200 machines over the last two years. Um, basically on price, they're also a superb cutting machine that uh, customers have discovered for themselves and we wanted to, all of our traditional turning centres are box way and heavy duty and we've come up with the linear rail um, CT52LR hoping that it will follow in the footsteps of the VMC range. So you can see any of those videos in full on the mtdcnc.com forward slash Mac website. Now for every machine installation you'll need one of these or some of these. So coming up after the break we talk tooling and accessories. changes to the the Cupro range the co the Cupro range of coated tools yeah so the, the Cupro range of tools um, has been very very successful for us the, the Cupro coating has proven to be very very successful on a whole range of materials from mold and dye into aerospace um, type materials um, giving extra performance extra life so we, we've pushed forward really with what customers are looking for really the latest development is on the six fluted tools, once again brought about by the demands of tricoidal milling. Um, typically our six fluted tool was always a long tool, long overall, long fluted tool. And people wanted the six flutes, but in a stub version, so that's what we've brought to the market now. We have a new line completely, it's called solid line. Um, people are really familiar with the old stamping technology that's been around for a few years now. Well, this is just a step up. Uh, we have a new industry standard. You can use, it uses all the same vices that people have got in their workshops now. It has this 96 and 52 centers, uses all the same studs, and we have three or four different variants. Um, 
for all types of machines. This is the pre-drilled, which will almost become the industry standard, I guess. It's 52.96, so in the one plate, 27 mil thick, you've got a simple mechanism and you've got the simple 52.96. That's, three, that's a good idea. So you need you need one plate for both devices. You only need one plate for both devices. And uh, if we, the first one, it's it's stamping round material. That's right. Yeah, it's it's called the Macro Four Grip. Uh, it's uh, I think probably out of the new products, it's it's probably the most interesting for us. Uh, there's lots of customers that uh, that uh, clamp round round material. And many of them at the moment will machine uh, two flats on there and stamp it and use the standard vices. So there's a, there's a new set of stamping jaws uh, uh, for the uh, for the rep, which will fit any existing stamping unit out, out with the customers. And then there's uh, vi uh, there's vice jaws, which again will fit all of the standard vices that are already customers already have. So by changing four cap screws on the on the stamping unit and changing over their vice jaws, which customers often do uh, just to reverse them to get the bigger clamping range uh, you're, you're up and running um, at Mac 2020 we were going to be exhibiting our latest uh, products um, which sort of fall into the industry for uh, for that really and that's the quick changeover of not only collets using a robot arm um, but changing over the collet and the end stop as one complete entity so that you can actually change over a product lights out and completely go from one part to another part without the intervention of anybody at all our also other product is the iq chuck which has got a, a chip embedded into it which is controlled by the machine controlled by bluetooth which allows the pressure clamping pressure to be changed on the fly completely so we can go from low to high clamping pressure without stopping the spindle um, without removing the part so that each part is cut kind of exact clamping pressure before we touch on what else was on the stand i want to talk to you about the ultrasonic tool holders that was something new you were going to be showing can you maybe explain what they are and where they fit yeah, uh, thanks for having me, Paul. Yes, so the, the ultrasonic holder was a new thing we were going to be showcasing in the UK. Um, it's from our partner, Acro, um, and they've been, they've been promoting it quite a lot in Taiwan, and they're having a quite a lot of success with it. So we were looking to bring it to the, to the UK. So effectively, it will go on to um, a VMC, kind of as what you would do as uh, an angle head, uh, a live to order but it works with um, a generator off, off the side of the machine. So it gets its kilowatts from the generator and that then drives the, um, effectively like the set axis so you get more, more hits from, from it. It's not just the machinery and equipment that's been evolving over the years. Um, the materials have also been evolving and Interco Special Steels and Alloys were launching four new materials to their portfolio, expanding their range of ice strength and corrosion resistant alloys for 2020. The new materials would complement their existing range of eye integrity nickel alloys and complex stainless steels. Well, hello, Gio. Um, me and my father, who my father invented the, the microlock system uh, a few years ago, we have been developing together. I've been calling him in out of his retirement and um, we've been developing together a, a, a five axis vice that's uh, pneumatic. We wanted it to be pneumatic and, and not hydraulics because uh, a lot of automated systems run off pneumatics. So uh, the plan is that it's, we've already designed it. We were just literally making the, the prototypes um, when all this happened. So obviously we've, um, you know, we, we've shelved it, but it, it will be at Mac, definitely. It will be at Mac in January. We are going to be able to show a lot of new products alongside our existing range. First of all, we've got uh, our Filter Mist core product. We've got the our new F monitor that is, um, has now been launched. This is a system to monitor how well the Filter Mist unit is working. It measures now heat and vibration to add on to the time um, limits on the previous system so it's great to just keep a check that your um, extraction is working efficiently 
Um, <clears throat> we also will be showing uh, the absolute products that we sell alongside Filter Mist for Almost Collection. So that's our uh, Mist Collection range. Um, through the coolant program, using ZXT inserts. ZXT are laser generated inserts that were brought in by Appitech to improve uh, chip control. So clearly, new technology on many sliding head machines means that um, the LFVs and HFT systems from Star have improved chip control dramatically. What we have found though is this also helps. Uh, it improves both finish and performance and tool life. So we're very pleased with the performance and the sales of uh, ZXT have gone extremely well in the last, well, up until just recently, um, have been going extremely well. We plan to uh, to certainly launch the um, um, the uh, RT100 XF drill, uh, which was a new drill that we have in the range. Um, we've uh, been lucky enough that we've been running quite a few of these now around companies in the UK, and we're having a lot of success within it, uh, which is good. Uh, it's a solid carboy drill. Um, it's a um, it's a it's a it's a new geometry. It's very difficult to be fair to bring a lot of new things into drilling. If you think of drilling, it's 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 hundreds of years old if you have respect and and to all intents and purposes the tool looks very similar than it did uh, many 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 years ago. Um, yeah, it was disappointing that uh, obviously the Mac was cancelled. Um, we had a, a new new stand set up, a new uh, exciting way of showing our products um, for, for the Mac this year. Um, good thing is we get the chance to show this now. We've already signed up for 2021 in January. Uh, but yeah, we was, um, we've was we shown new lines of ISO turning inserts, uh, next generation CVD and PVD. We have a new sintering process that have pushed our inserts to the next sort of level. Uh, we have inserts for um, uh, specifically for stainless steel and heat resistant super alloys uh, with ruthenium based cement and also um, new programs of solid carbide milling. Never has it been more important to try and bring automation into your process. Now, did you know for every job lost to automation, four are created? Well, at Mac this year, there were plenty of new ways to add automation into your machine shop. So let's take a look. Now, if you have been following our channels, you'd have seen at the back end of last year, we visited Herco and took a look at one of their new Cobot offerings. Uh, I spoke with David Waghorn as this particular unit was also going to be on show at Mac 2020. Yes, it's, it's, it's actually a product range, if you like. Um, we, Herco bought a, a business called Pro Cobots um, based in Pittsburgh in the USA. Um, and we, we've really taken, now they do full automation solutions for all sorts of, of machinery. Um, but the idea was to use their knowledge to integrate it into a solution for Herco machines. So, so the idea is that we could um, I mean, there's lots of robots and, and automation options on the market. The idea was to get something that would be a kind of seamless integration with the Herco machine. So once it's plugged in, um, the, the uh, operation of the automation would appear on the uh, machine control and it would allow you very simple and easy way of operating automation or not as you choose on your Herco machine. What will you actually see on the stand then? So we'll have a FP800, which is the large 3D vision system for handling of large parts. Uh, we did uh, a few weeks, even a couple of months ago, time flies uh, with yourselves. We did a little bit of a preview on that. So that'll be on, on, the, uh, on the stand. We'll have the SC3000, which is the portable uh, system, the quick setup uh, system, uh, all again with the flex load vision system. We'll have the FP300, which is for handling of small, random bulk products. But as for this message, uh, so just describe what's happening uh, behind you. And we are going to see this in a minute in action, but can you tell us what would have been on show at the event? Yeah, basically, as I said earlier, um, it's a completely automated system. So we have a robot which is uh, picking an item, uh, placing it into the lathe, the lathe will then obviously um, produce the product. The robot then takes the product from out of the lathe, presents it to the laser, the laser marks, sends a signal back to the robot, the robot moves off, and then the entire sequence starts again. 
So fully automated system without any human interference. Uh, and what would have been the differences that um, people would have seen from from your previous, what what everybody can see now as a distinctive green um, collaborative robot to what you're now offering here with the CRX? Yeah, with the CRX, Paul, it, it, it's, it's more about um, having a sleek design um, concept, which is, you know, it's aesthetically pleasing on the eye. It's got good reach from the robot. It's, it's easy to use. Um, and, and people will not recognize it as a FANUC um, industrial-based robot. Um, you know, the arms are smooth and um, nice uh, shapes um, that will, will enable the operator to, to get uh, reaches in and out of difficult places. Um, and it's, uh, it's really something that um, is, a, is a total different branch in uh, direction for FANUC. You know, it's not the industrial robot that um, people are used to seeing. Hydrofeed would have been exhibiting a range of long magazine bar feeds. Now, there's nothing new about long magazine bar feeds. They've been on the market for a number of years. However, the models that we represent, we truly believe give the UK market something very, very innovative and a quicker return on the investment of the product. Um, we're focusing our efforts at the moment on the fixed head range of bar feeds from Top Automazioni, uh, which gives us three models, the X-Files S, the Fusion, and the Beta. Now, the X-Files and the Fusion are wonderfully engineered pieces of equipment. The X-Files S covers a range of bars from 10 millimeters up to 100 millimeters which is nothing new. However, what is new is the fact that there is no requirement for additional guide channel sets on that bar feed. Therefore, to change over from bar diameter from a 50 mil to a 70 mil, 80 mil to a 30 mil, whichever way you want to go, it takes no more than a couple of minutes. So what drives all this kit that's enabled us to create this documentary and in fact allowing you to watch it as I speak is software. A huge aspect of productivity improvement comes as a result of software. So after the advert, we're going to talk optimization, collision avoidance, ease of programming and so much more. So this week we would have been uh, demonstrating the Swiss type um, technologies that we have inside SolidCam. Uh, we have full support for any configuration of Swiss type uh, machine, unlimited number of axes, uh, unlimited number of channels are supported as well. Uh, we've also got, for instance, uh, on the sort of citizen style machines, you would want the choice of axis patterns uh, using the different G codes and things like that. Uh, full simulation inside SolidCam as well. Uh, with a Swiss type and uh, as, as you can see from the footage we, we're able to drive quite complicated machines. I mean what really impressed me about the footage is the advanced mill turn and um, some of them them 3D scanning features on a, on a sliding head was something that I didn't really kind of um, associate a sliding head with. Yeah, so the, the, the sliding heads do have uh, five axis capability and simultaneous capabilities with the, the B axis uh, rotational heads on them. So we can fully drive those, we can do uh, surface scanning, we can do simultaneous movements uh, and we can do indexial work with those as well. That's very, very interesting. Now the first thing that comes into my mind here is um, when machine tool vendors are selling machines, they're, they're, they're promoting how quick they are, how fast their acceleration is, how quick their rapids are. Um, are we suggesting that there is a possibility that someone could purchase a machine 
and uh, that was maybe a mu much faster machine, a much more capable machine than an inferior one. But by purchasing the inferior one and adding in things like your software could actually give a similar performance. Is that possible? That is definitely possible. What you've got to remember is a machine tool is essentially it's executing instructions. So it will execute instructions, whether they're good or bad instructions. So regardless of what machine you're running, you want it to be receiving the very best instructions um, to get to so that it can work to its full capability. So with Hypermill and now with also Virtual Machine and Optimizer, you can then really you know, take, take that to the next level. Um, and then for this year, we were having a separate stand. First time at Mac, people would have been able to, to experience our GECO verification and simulation software, um, NC Simul. This is a new solution for us that we're promoting in the UK now. Um, with this solution, we build an exact digital virtual copy of your machine, which we call a digital twin, which rep replicates exactly the behavior of your machine. Now, you've got a vast array of different software applications to help many, many different sectors, as we know uh, from some of those uh, solutions uh, and brands that you've just mentioned, Gareth. But what types of um, challenges in the manufacturing sector uh, do some of these products actually address? Again, with, with uh, the technology that the machine tool builders are now coming up with, today's machines are becoming more and more complex with many accesses. Parts are becoming more and more expensive. The material costs are being more and more expensive. So again, the customers need to make sure that they're making the parts right first time and minimising scrap. Now, it's quite interesting. Uh, obviously, speaking to uh, your colleagues uh, over the last few months um, at different uh, exhibitions and, and some of your customers that you're working with, is, is that is version 9 uh, a bit of a game changer uh, in reference to CNC verification and simulation? Um, for, for us, it's, it, it's a big step forwards. Um, we've always been We've always emulated the full machine, so the mechanics of it and the way the way it works. Um, graphically, it's not always looked as good as it should, and, and but version nine changes that. It also improves the speed of the way it operates. So any of our existing users uh, who, who've moved to nine or will move to nine will go, "Wow, this is awesome! This is really, really good." So once it's made, it needs inspecting to ensure your customers get exactly what they've ordered. So after this short advert, we're going to talk metrology. Yeah, Mac 2020 for Zeiss this year was going to be very exciting. We had a, a number of new products that were, well, new to the UK from an exhibiting perspective, but at the same time we had something that was brand new that we were doing a soft launch on that hadn't been seen anywhere in the world before. The products that were new from an exhibiting standpoint were the new Contora, it's brand new, uh, comes with a multi-sensor capability, so on, very exciting product. The new Prismo Fortis, that's our high-end system. Again, comes with our mass multi-sensor capability. Excellent product. I strongly recommend people have a look at that. We have a digi digital corner whereby we were promoting all of our new digital platforms, falling in line with Industry 4.0. SRE Max, which is an X-ray system that owns itself to aerospace and uh, casting manufacturing. Uh, scanning electron microscopy, that was there as well, something we haven't shown before. Um, and we also had our after sales corner whereby we were 
presenting what we offer from a training perspective and so on and so forth. Now, now I, I've seen a lot of engineers over the years, as you would imagine, being in the industry for uh, nearly 30 years now. And, and I see yeah. a lot of different jobs and those and I'd say, well, you know, do, do you not actually preset your tools? And a lot of the answers is, is, is no. But what, why do you think that engineers should be using a tool presetter? Sure. So, um, you know, obviously there's there's offline um, tool preset as an online tool preset as and, it, and you know, it's really important to to, to make sure that, you know, the, the length and size of your tools. Um, but the, in my mind, there's three main advantages of, of setting the tools on the machine. Um, I mean, like like a science experiment, minimizing the number of variables is 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 key, really. So um, measuring on the on on the machine means you can measure a spinning tool and you can take into account any run out of the tool, any spindle growth and any thermal factors. We've got a range of CMMs, so we'll have some CMMs with automation. Um, we're going to have a new range of portable arms to show. We're also going to have some new things to show too, because we've got a massive range of CMMs and you can appreciate you can't take everything to the show. So we've actually invested in some virtual reality. Uh, so we've got some software, we've got a digital factory that's got a range of our CMMs in there. And also for the first time, we'll also be showing Metrology Gate, which is a true industry for software package. Virtual reality, what does this mean? What, 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 what can so, people expect to see? Yeah, so it's a good question. I mean, basically, if you can visualize a lot of um, these headsets that you see today, well, there's a lot of gaming systems that have got it. So effectively, you'll be able to put a headset on and you'll be walking inside a generic factory that's got a lot of our CMMs in there measuring various parts. But the nice thing is you'll be able to see the full range. You'll see from the entry level Altera C all the way through to some very large gantry CMMs that could be measuring big aircraft structures. Exciting or what? I mean, what a show. Um, thank you for joining me today. And remember that you can see the full length of all of those features on the mtdcnc.com forward slash Mac website. Now that was just a taster of what we've created in the last few weeks. For now, from me and the team, a big thanks to the MTA and all of our clients for working with us to produce this digital platform. And before we go, let's get a few words from James about Mac 2021. James, what a fantastic show we put on. A great opportunity uh, to show many innovations, new products that would have been at Mac 2020. Finally, could you give a message to exhibitors and visitors in regards to Mac 2021? Thank you so much for the opportunity to give a personal thanks to not just MTD, but to all the majority of our exhibitors who have shown faith in the Mac show in agreeing to come across in very difficult circumstances to the rescheduled show in January 2021. We believe the timing is going to be incredibly fortuitous and help kickstart the UK economy at just the right time, which is going to be very badly needed. And so I'd just like to give a personal thanks to all those exhibitors and everyone supporting the industry. Uh, what an excellent preview for the show. Thank you so much. <laughs>